Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel. I'm your host, Nick, and this is going to be the next video of the Conflict of Nations every unit in the game tier making list. Um, it's a multi-part series, so stay tuned for every part. Links to previous parts will be down in the description and links to future parts, if they are already uploaded, will be uploaded in the description later on as well. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to. It really helps me grow. Um, and that's all. Enjoy the video. Next up, we are going into another one of my personal favorites. It's going to be Apaches or Attack Helicopters. These helicopters are meant for taking down armored targets. And that's one of the things that not many people understand about helicopters is that they're very good against specific units. For example, gunships, infantry, attack helicopters, armor. And even against anti-aircraft, like mobile anti-aircraft, these helicopters are really tanky, usually packing about 30 to 35 hit points. And so they're very tanky against anti-aircraft damage and really their biggest vulnerability is anti-aircraft from mobile uh, anti-aircraft units and fighter jets and other multi-role fighters such as strike fighters. These are really good because your opponent is not always going to expect them. Again, they require level 2 airfields so they might think you're going for a strike fighter setup. But really these things are also pretty situational because a lot of times, especially in pub matches, people are going to go for a lot of infantry setups or infantry slash armor setups. And the more infantry there is in a stack, the less damage your Apaches are going to do. It really depends on what your enemy is doing. But when you're going up against those full armored slash support stacks, that's where they really shine because they will do their max damage and that's where they will be so deadly. In my opinion, this is going to get a B tier because it does very well what it is supposed to do and what it's purpose to do. But also a lot of times, especially in pubs, there's going to be counters to that by simply people putting infantries mixed with their um, armored units, which is going to lessen the damage overall. But I would say the Apaches are always a must if you're going against an opponent who likes to use artillery, anti-aircraft, or armor. Next up, we're going into one of my personal favorites because it's the first C unit we're covering. It's going to be the Attack Submarine. Now, this is one of the units that I personally love even in events and competitive modes, specifically for the reason that it just does so well what it's supposed to do. Being a submarine, it's invulnerable to missiles, it can't be hit by missiles at all of any sort, it can't get, it can't really be hit um, uh, for much damage by most ship classes, including cruisers, including um, other ship classes, and also they're very cheap with components. Unlike a lot of surface vessels, submarines are most expensive in electronics and they include some rare. But really where they shine is that they really save you um, that buttload of components you would be spending on surface vessels. And submarines can do really well what surface vessels also can do. Submarines have a really nice hit point and damage buff in open ocean. Um, in the shallow water, not so much, so obviously they're not good for coastal defending, but what they really do well is you can create walls of submarines over entire oceans, you can catch transports, you can catch um, enemy task forces, and overall you can kill so much with these things because they take way less damage um, than they'll normally be dishing out because of just how much damage they can do to submarines and ships. While ships are not doing so much damage to them unless they're destroyers or frigates or sometimes cruisers. So really, I'm going to put these things as the first S tier because they're such a good unit in the game and they're easily covered by frigates because MPAs and air units can be one of their biggest weaknesses, but frigates uh, compared um, tied up with subs as well can be a good pair up for them as the frigates will cover the subs from anti-air and the subs will cover the frigates from ships and submarines. I would say this is one of the best naval units in the game. Next we're going to be doing the missile sub. The missile sub in my opinion is not as good as its brother the attack sub and I will tell you why. I don't like this sub as much because 
it doesn't really serve a purpose besides launching missiles in this game. You have to have ballistic missiles or cruise missiles to use this effectively, and the attack submarine can already launch cruise missiles, I think, three at a time. Uh, ballistic missile subs um, really are meant to launch missiles at targets from the sea, and they can be good in some situations if you are going for a missile setup, but overall these things are not going to be very useful because there are a couple other units in the game that can launch ballistic missiles, including elite bombers, which a lot of people like to use annoyingly. But overall, these things don't serve much of a purpose besides that, and because they are so reliant on missiles, I'm going to put this unit at a D tier because it's so limited um, purely because it requires you to be go doing a missile setup. The next unit I'm going to be covering is an interesting one. It's going to be the regular land-based AWACS. A lot of people don't like this, including some of my friends who have been playing the game for a long time, and I usually like to tell them otherwise because the AWACS is very useful in its own way. The AWACS can get up to a 300 radar range and it can detect low signature aircraft which means fifth generation fighters aka max level fighter jets it can detect helicopters it can detect ships the only weakness of an AWACS's radar is that it cannot detect infantry based units but it can detect high level signatures for ground which means armor support basically any vehicle the only things it can't detect are infantry and that makes it so good because besides its somewhat lackluster range from airfields, it can still traverse about 1,800 kilometers, I think. And that is really good because it can get where it needs to go. It's obviously slower because it's a heavy aircraft, but this is a unit you want to use to get purely a lot of intel and information about your battlefield, about your enemy, and you will be able to um, make a plan on what you should do because this radar is so large, you can detect so many different things in a wide area. And I would say that the weakness of not spotting infantry can easily be solved by going for some ground radar along with it. And even then, people are usually going to be pairing um, armor or support units with their uh, infantry. And so really, this isn't too much of a downside for you. I would say always protect these, have them near anti-aircraft, have them near air superiority fighters, and if you're not at war with somebody, have your uh, actual AWACS not over their land, but over um, water or your borders so you can get a lot of intel while also being safe and not declaring war. I'm going to give the AWACS an easy A tier because I just love how much intel they can get you, um, and they're so flexible, you can scan an entire border within a few in-game hours. It's just that easy to use this thing. Next up, in my opinion, is going to be one of the worst units in the game, and it's not even probably the unit's fault. I would say even it might be the fact that the game developers haven't given the aircraft carrier the potential it can have in this game. Aircraft carriers can hold 15 aircraft max of your own player, um, meaning it can hold 15 carrier-based aircraft such as helicopters or naval um, jets and naval AWACS, and it has a lot of radar range. It has, I think, 125 radar range. It has a lot of hit points, and it's somewhat slower, but what it lacks is an actual attack. Its attack is based on the aircraft. Now, if you're going for a carrier setup, you're obviously gonna have a large Navy and you're gonna wanna have a decent Air Force because you're gonna wanna have decent planes or helicopters to put on that thing because why get an aircraft carrier if your planes or helicopters are level one or if you don't have any? The aircraft carrier is lackluster as well because of things that we're missing out on. Players um, can only put their vehicles on the aircraft carrier. You cannot put allied planes or helicopters on the aircraft carrier, which means you can't uh, work in sync with somebody and go for an aircraft carrier while they go for naval uh, aircraft. And it's really, um, it's really a missed opportunity and it's really sad to me. And that's why the aircraft carrier is going to be an F tier because in certain situations, especially in events, it's really good. I had fun with this thing before using the Tomcats to cover my own navy, but in pub matches, 
people would really enjoy if you could put allied uh, aircraft on these carriers because it would make it so much easier to work in tandem with teammates and make team play so much more interesting and less uh, solo gameplay based and more so team based. The aircraft carrier can have many improvements and I hope to see those in the future but for now it sits at an F tier. So guys I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I am enjoying making this series so far and obviously it's ended up being more parts than I thought it would be but we've come this far. So guys, if you enjoy the channel or enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and it's the single biggest thing that helps my channel grow and thrive. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you guys disliked it, leave a dislike. And in the comments, if you wanna write why you liked or disliked it, feel free to do so. If you have a question or you just wanna say hi, you can also do that. I try to react and respond to as many as I can and if I haven't yet, I will get to it later. So guys, I hope you have a beautiful day. Stay tuned for the future parts. Nick out.